Hello everyone, I'm currently out of the studio right now at an event called FinCon 2023 in New Orleans. And today I got a question that came in from Ashley. So shout out to you, Ashley. I'm gonna go ahead and read your question, give my thoughts along with some action steps. For those of you who have been watching my material for a while now, you're looking to improve your personal finances, get out of debt, create debt leverage, create more income, create more cash flow, just be a better financial steward overall. You're gonna wanna consider some personal financial accountability, coaching, consulting strategy. And those are all the things that I can provide, I can do really well, and I have a blast doing it actually. Read your question, Ashley. When you guys visit my website, there's a contact form and has a whole bunch of questions. It really gives me a good idea of what I'm getting into when you're about to do business with me, right? When you're about to work with me and I'm about to serve you. So Ashley has an income of $6,000 a month. Total expenses are $5,100. She did not put the total amount of debt that we owe. So that is a variable that we're missing, but the total net cash flow is about 900 bucks a month. Dealing with a married family here, 44 years old, credit score is over 720, which is good. Um, husband is a truck driver and wife, Ashley is a stay at home mom. They do not have a business at the moment. And their current situation is we are currently selling a house and have equity. We just learned about infinite and velocity banking. We're looking for a coach slash consultant. On the coaching side, I can educate them about the infinite banking concept and velocity banking on a one-to-one -one personal relationship, whether that be through phone calls or Zoom meetings live. I can also record the conversations. So that's typically how my operation works. Then on the consulting side, which is more strategic, more action step based, more methodically thought out is really looking at their numbers. So they would have to give me all their numbers, both husband and wife. Ideally want to be on the same page and we're going to figure out, does it make sense to ensure both of them at the same time or one at a time? If in my head, if I was married, I have a fiance, I'm thinking, how do I ensure the both of us at the same time as we work our way to becoming debt free or creating financial freedom in our life, that kind of a thing. So I can definitely serve you, Ashley, and your husband on the infinite banking and velocity banking side of things, really figuring out, all right, you're about to sell this house, where are we moving? Are we renting or are we using that uh, proceeds to purchase another property? Are we moving out of states? We wanna figure that part out. How much money will we have left over after the purchase of that new home, let's say, or if we're just going to rent, then how much money do I have left over? Based on that amount, I like to first establish a savings plan if we're gonna go straight into high cash value life insurance, right? I wanna develop a savings strategy, a number that we can consistently do each and every year, right? Without fail. So there's that cannot fail number. I can do it with my eyes closed. That's baseline. Okay, at minimum, this is how much money I'm gonna store away and save in cash value life insurance. At minimum per year, what's that number? Is it 10 grand, is it 50 grand, is it 100 grand? What's that bare minimum number? right then there's the ideal number right like say for example your baseline number was look at that worst case scenario i know i can save at least seven thousand bucks a year right couple hundred dollars a month my goal is to save at least 15 grand a year and then there's the over and beyond the max number what's the desired total amount of money that you would like the ability to put into your policy, let's say that number 20,000. So we can design a policy where we're funding say 15 grand a year, but we're only required to pay in that base amount, let's say it was 7,000, right? So we can set a premium, a base premium below $7,000, right? If my max is 20, that I have the ability to fund 20K, I could set the base premium all the way down to like 2,000 bucks, 2,500, three grand, very, very low, low, low base. Then we tack on a term writer for a period of time, which would give us that ability to overfund the policy for however long we want to fund it for. And that would be the other thing that we're going to solve for is how long do we want to fund the policy? How much do we want to fund the policy? What is our base minimum we can pay in that would cover our base premium, our PUA rider term cost. Those are three different things that at, at worst case scenario, this is what I know I can pay in. And that gives me the ability to overfund the policy each and every year. And depending on how long, 
we're going to fund the policy, right? Let's say you wanted to fund the policy for, I'm 44 years old, right? Ashley's 44. Let's say she wants to fund it for 35 years, 20,000 being the max number times 35 years, I would have paid in a max dollar amount of $700,000. And let's say the base amount was seven grand, 7,000 times 35 years. So at bare minimum, I want to be able to pay in at least 245,000 a year. Now, I will say this, you get a policy designed where we're trying to shoot for 20 and you never get there, then you, you are essentially overpaying for a life insurance contract. No need in doing that, right? So we want to set realistic expectations. Way to do that is simply discussing asking yourselves, what's the likelihood of me saving money over the next 35 years? What's the likelihood of me committing to a financial number over the next 35 years? Really be honest with yourself and then worst case scenario, you design a policy where we're only paying into it for 10 years, 15 years, a short funded policy. Worst case scenario, you make more money, you'll have more money that you don't know what to do with and we can go get another policy, right? Maybe on the kids or on husband or on wife. So that would be like, Worst case scenario, but I, I usually like to set realistic expectations when it comes to infinite banking concept, really getting to know you, Ashley, the husband, like what's our track record of saving? Are we gonna really commit to this? Because if we're not, then we don't need to have such a high base premium over funding a, a policy for a really long time. If we're gonna fund a policy for a really long time, 35 years, we can't have a small base premium. We're gonna wanna have a higher base, preferably. So maybe we have a base premium of around 4,000 bucks, 5,000 bucks, right? It's still below that number that I know I can do each year, that seven grand. So we have to come up with that number. What's the number I know I can do regardless of my debt, elim debt elimination plan, my increasing income plan, my investing plan, my saving, my giving, all that, that base number. Then there's that ideal number, then there's like the max goal number, the ability. What would, how much of a gap do you wanna allow that policy to, to give us the ability to save more money? It's cool to do that because you're basically creating goals for the future and you're allowing, you're locking in the health rating now and you're giving yourself that ability to max fund a policy where you're able to dump in say the 700 grand over 35 years as opposed to only 300,000. Or if it was 15,000 over 35 years, it's 525K. So you would have missed out on that difference between 525 and 700K. A lot of things to discuss, right, Ashley? We would typically have maybe three to four plus meetings before even purchasing a policy. So the last thing I wanna do is just sell you a policy right out the gate. Depending on where we're at, it might just make sense to get some term policy. If you have no life insurance whatsoever, a term life insurance policy on husband, especially because he's the breadwinner, and then one on yourself, right, would, would be ideal, right? If we're just starting out, I'm only making as a, as a household, we're only bringing in 6,000 a month and we're only cash flowing 900. So if I can get two simple term policies that would cover us in case uh, death, wipe out all our debts and there would be money left over for the other spouse to you know, bury and continue to have income coming in, that's gonna be extremely important. Just say, let's, let's solve for that first while we figure out this income problem that we have, which is we don't make enough money. At 44 years old, bringing in only 6,000 net per month, it's not enough money. If we're trying to achieve a certain lifestyle by a certain age, you know, I would like to go on a 10 year financial freedom plan with you, Ashley, where it's like, hey, between you and your husband, Within 10 years or less, how do we go from making six grand a month to $60,000 a month, right? Within 10 years or less, can we 10X our income within 10 years or less using principles that do not fail? With accountability, coaching, consulting, strategic planning, I believe we can get there together. So the action step for you, you can either book a phone call with me, 275 an hour is my current rate, as of 2023, then book a call with me just to get to know each other, right? Let's see if we're a good fit. You can start there, or you can join Finance Geek Ministry, go through my process, and you can jump on a call with me for free. Now, we are cash flowing $900, so $275 is a really good investment in your personal finances. That's what I would suggest. In that one hour discussion, we're gonna get to know each other a little bit. You're gonna send me all your numbers in advance and then i'm going to lay out options along with more action steps follow-up call after that if we go the insurance route those are multiple calls that we'll most likely have that's completely free i got a team for that as well so it won't just be me serving you and be having a 
a team serve you as well. And then on the Velocity Banking side, right, engaging in a long-term coaching plan with me would be in your best interest long-term in the short term. Jump on a phone call and see if we're the right fit. So with that being said, hope you all are having a wonderful day. God bless. We'll be talking soon. Change of scenery here. I'm in my hotel. The lighting's not that great. It is nighttime. So I'll, I'll make a couple more videos, try to do it during the day would have been smarter so we'll do that if you guys have any questions go to my website denzelrodriguez.com and click on contact and i will make videos responding to your question directly with your numbers just giving you my insight and then directing you either to either to a playlist on my youtube channel certain videos i'll email you directly after i make the video like this i'm gonna you know send ashley a message I usually do this. Right? I try to respond to as many contact forms as possible. Personally, my automated process is responding to everyone. So as soon as you fill out a contact form, you're, you're immediately put into a process. You're going to get a series of emails that are going to be answering your question because I've been doing this for a while now. I know what questions are coming. So I answer them through these a series of emails. I plug you into a, a community finance geek ministry. I plug you into private Zoom meetings that I host. I plug you into a YouTube channel, guiding you where you would like to spend most of your time. If you're just you know, looking at velocity banking or you're just looking at pregame work, I've got all different types of playlists and videos on the YouTube channel in chronological order to help you out. Talking soon.